Hickok 45 here. Guess what? I recently underwent a conversion. I wish I had a firearm I would show you. Oh, I do. Look at that. Woo! A Colt conversion? Is that what that is? <laughs> yes, I'm converted. Oh, man. Right in the middle. Look at that. Right in the top. Let's start out with smoking some pot. Boom. Let's smoke a little more. <laughs> and let's fire a blank. See, I knew it. Yes, this is the uh, Cimarron uh, conversion, you know, the Richards conversion, okay, transitional gun. You may have seen it. It's been out, I think, a few years. Uh, Cimarron, Taylor's, you know, there's companies. Uh, they give you Birdie and other companies in Spain or Italy the specs that they want, and uh, they import them into this country. And uh, they're not made in this country, but they, they give them the specs they want. And that's kind of how these guns come about. Let's unload it, and I'll talk about it and shoot it some more. They, uh, in fact, uh, the owner of uh, Cimarron, I know, has a, I believe I've read, has a pretty vast gun collection and of originals. And that's kind of how they got started, if you read the history. And, uh, you know, he's pretty uh, adamant about getting them as correct as possible, I think. This one's supposed to be based on, you know, I think one of the guns in his collection, the uh, Cole Richards, uh, I think, Type 2 conversion, okay? Now, when I say conversion, that means it was converted to fire cartridges. And I couldn't put my hands on my 1860. It, uh, <laughs> the cat ball, it kind of fell apart on me. This is a 51, but you know, you all know this, most of you, unless you're really new. So this is for very new people. The, uh, you know, the percussion revolvers that were uh, big in the day, of course, uh, from whenever, the 1830s to uh, 1870s, they, uh, they needed a, uh, you load them from the front and they needed a, a cap, you know, on the nipples and everything. And then you, you ram the ball down with this and go around, put powder in, ram the ball, put the ball in, or cartridge, paper cartridge, and you ram down each one. It, you know, it's a loading process. You've seen us do it here. If not, get back and look at those videos. And, uh, and that's an 1851 Navy. Uh, those were converted too later. So after the Civil War, uh, there were so many thousands of these 1860 uh, Army. That was the, what this is based on. The percussion version of this is an 1860 Army. Very popular, you know, 44 caliber, carried in the Civil War by so many people after the war. Very popular. Colt made a ton of these things, just like they did the 51 Navies. Well, uh, cartridges were coming along, of course. We know that. Even, you know, even at, at the beginning of the Civil War almost, 1861 or two, we had the Henry rifle firing the 44 Henry cartridge, the Spencer firing, what, a 56 cal, whatever, a cartridge in use throughout the war. And there were others. So in rifles, cartridges were being used, but in handguns, not so much. There were a few. Smith & Wesson had the patent on that, the Roland White patent. They owned that. And they, they actually had some 22s, 22 shorts that Civil War soldiers carried. They were little black powder 22 cartridge guns. They're kind of neat. It's one I've never owned. And they were, I think, a tip-up barrel. And they would hold whatever, five or whatever. There was one in 32 as well, I think. And I uh, just never owned one of those. So Smith & Wesson kind of owned that on handguns, the Patton. And uh, so Colt couldn't do anything until that ran out in 69, 70, 71, I think officially maybe 71, 18, uh, 71 even. But so then they could go about, uh, you know, building cartridge guns, all right? Uh, I think Remington actually paid Smith & Wesson a royalty so they could start making them earlier. But Colt refused to do that. They weren't going to pay the royalty. They just wait for the patent to run out. And so here they are. After the war, there were all kinds of 1860 Army percussion guns, you know, on the surplus market, you know, everywhere, 51 Aves, you name it. There were so many of those out there. And so what are they going to do? Let's just keep making more new ones and try to sell them. So they were competing with them themselves, basically, with all the guns out there on the market. And uh, so sometimes that's a reason companies come out with a new gun, right? Or, or change a like Glock 19 or whatever it might be a little bit to uh, uh, have another market. But anyway... So they went to, uh, to work, the Brain Trust there, uh, uh, Richards and uh, Mason and, and others. There was a guy named Thuler that uh, did uh, some of the early conversion. 
Uh, I think he might have worked for Colt as well. I don't know if I forget. Uh, one day we'll do this extensive maybe video on just all the conversions and things. If I can get all that in my head, but but uh, Richards was uh, a Colt employee and he was kind of the claim to fame on the early really successful conversions. So they just need to take the black powder gun, the percussion, and figure out. Okay, now how can we turn that into a cartridge gun, you know, like the 1873, like this, you know. You've seen this a few million times around here, right? The Colt 45 uh, Peacemaker. So, but these are before that. So what could we do here in the transitional period uh, while we're waiting for 1873 when we are going to come out with that? <laughs> well, they didn't know exactly what they were going to come out with yet. But, you know, so it, it's just like if John and I or you, you're in your garage, how could I make this into a cartridge gun? Well, I got to get it open in the back, don't I, you know? So, so anyway, they, uh, well, that's another story. They didn't necessarily cut many of them off, but uh, that's what you end up with. You got a kind of a cut off uh, cylinder back here. And so you can put a bullet in there, a cartridge, and then you don't need caps because that's in the cartridge. So they put another plate in there, as you can see right here, and that has a, uh, a gate on it, loading gate, so you can get to it, okay? Because this cylinder looked like this one at one point, right? Or it would have. And so you got to get a hole back here, you got to get bullets in it, and uh, you know, you got to get the, however you want to fire it, the firing pin on the hammer, or, or have a floating firing pin on the frame, or whatever you're going to do, and then your sights and all this. So you got to take care of it, and then an ejector. You know, if you got cartridges, then you want to get that empty out. So they, they put one of those on. Okay. So this is Richards. This is the, a, 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 a copy. Pretty, pretty much true to form, just a little bigger. Uh, but it's a, a Richards Type 2 conversion, essentially. All right. It's a, known as the transitional model. That's what they call it. And uh, you read about it, and most of the, what you read is pretty positive, that how it's, it's pretty accurate, okay, in terms of uh, replicating the originals. Now, I've never owned an original conversion revolver. I uh, can't compare and speak to that, really, as much or as well as some people can. But it's, it's pretty true. It's a little bigger. I'll load it while I'm yakking. And uh, it's a little bigger, and that's one thing I wanted to point out. It was uh, a 44, and it was... Uh, when it was converted, it was converted to handle 44 Colt cartridges, okay, 44 Colt. And it was a smaller cylinder, and 44 Colt would work because they had a very small rim. But now 44 Special would not when it came out because it had a rim, and what you end up with, you see when you're, this is a 45, but when you load all your, all your chambers, those cases, case heads are almost touching, aren't they? And... Uh, so back in the day, the 44 Special uh, cartridges, maybe some others, uh, that everything else would have chambered done okay, but, but the rim, the, the case head, the rim of it was too big and you couldn't get them all in there together. You could load two or three, but you couldn't you know, fill up the cylinders. Yeah, that, so it was 44, all right, uh, Colt is what they were chambered for. This one's 45, okay, so that's, again, what I'm trying to get to. That's why this one's a little bigger because it's chambered in 45 Colt which is a better idea, right? Who wants one chamber in 44 Colt? Where are you gonna buy that ammo? Okay, so let's load support. You load this just like you would my uh, Colt single actions or any clone. You load one, skip one, load the other four. Then when you cock it, it's gonna come down on an empty chamber, right? Okay, let's see if it'll work again. Now it prints a little high like all these tend to do and uh, you just have to allow for it like you always did. How about Mr. Cowboy? I'll aim right at his crotch. There we go. <laughs> and boom. How about a pink two liter? All right, all right. It is 45 Colt now. Keep in mind, you could bowl with it if you want to. All right. You could even hit a fake bowling pin painted red. <laughs> That should be all of them. Yeah, five. So it has a good feel. The 1860 Army has a big grip on it. You know, this is the same barrel arrangement you know, for the 1860 Army. And uh, that was the beauty of it. it was the 1860 Army carried through the Civil War and before, well, not too long before, uh, but uh, if you know your dates. But, you know, the same barrel and everything. So it's pretty cool the way they did it. The uh, uh, Richards 
came up with this idea. You know, you have this plunger, you know, when you're, like I was showing you here, the hinge, all this stuff. Well, the 1860 Army had the same thing, you know, it was plunger and to load and everything. Well, they just uh, took that all out and they filled in this hole here and that's actually part of the ejector rods. Yeah, that's pretty clever. So that's all one piece. It just slides in there and I guess it's screwed or riveted in there kind of and that holds your uh, your ejector housing and everything really solidly. So that's a pretty neat design. Later, they connected to the barrel, but uh, not bad. And of course you need a sight. The, uh, the first Richards conversion, they put the sight right here. You might see one of those in a picture of an original or even some of the replicas have the sight right on this ring up here, okay? And uh, instead of the hammer, and, uh, and then this one has the uh, uh, firing pin on the hammer. The very first Richards conversions had a frame-mounted firing pin, all right? And they had the sight right above it on this, okay? Now, this is the version 2, kind of the Type 2. So that's when they, they changed it a little bit. They tweaked it. Uh, I think they kept the same ejector rod and everything, that same arrangement. And uh, they moved the firing pin back onto the hammer, and they moved the sights back onto the hammer or on the yeah on the hammer right there see now that doesn't look like much of a sight and it's not really but when you you pick it up you know there's a little groove there and when you're actually sighting so it kind of works all right so there are two or three variations of it and uh you know the the third one was the richards mason i think it was called and there wasn't much left to do or they didn't change much uh what did they do i think they put the move the sight to right here and they might have changed something about how the sight was pinned. They may have pinned the firing pin or on, on the hammer or something like that, I don't know. But they did, I think, move the sight to right there, like on the open top, which was you know, being made about that time, which is a point to be made. Uh, I used to think that these conversions were all guns that people just like turned in or they took them to the gunsmith and and had them to put on the Richards conversion or something and get out their best saws and saw that off and, you know, and, and, and do that. Really, though, uh, as I've been reading more and more about it over the years, uh, the term conversion is almost a misnomer, uh, at least with the Colt conversions. And I'm sure there were some shade tree mechanics and <laughs> gunsmiths out there that, you know, had different conversions and types of conversions. I think I recall reading about some of those. But as far as these Colt conversions, they had thousands of parts of these 1860 armies. And so, you know, they needed to, to, to sell them. Like I said, they were competing with themselves or they just kept making the percussion revolver. And, and so these were basically made new, these parts. And that's what it comes down to. And if there was any conversion, you know, maybe they already had some of the cylinders made and they did have to cut them off, but it wasn't like they were coming back from the field. May have been some of that from the army, I don't know. But primarily, they were just making them differently, what it comes down to, okay? And they were basing on all these parts they already had. You can imagine, if you don't have to rebuild a, a new barrel, frame, essentially, and grip, and, and all that, you just need to tweak the cylinder and, and put this on, do some things like that. Well, that's not very expensive. And so, uh, relatively speaking, and so they were selling these. That's the other thing I, I didn't realize until recently. They were selling these up until like the late 70s. They were making these because they were a, a less expensive alternative to one of the cult single actions that came out in, in 73. So, so it was really another version of their gun in a lot of ways, a, a cheaper alternative that got the job done. Let's face it, you, you, you made the big leap. You, you got the cartridges a little easier to load than one of these, right? And, uh, you yeah, know, basically the same thing. Maybe a little more awkward, but I don't, not, not too much, I'll tell you. Pretty nice. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I might have to have one of these. I kind of like it. And so, yeah, conversion's a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, so they made a ton of these things and sold them, and at least 9,000, I think, of the, of the Type Two, if I got my numbers correct, and uh, just kept making them because there was a market. There's always a market for a less expensive firearm, right? It really is, especially one that works. So pretty cool uh, conversion. I always thought they were cool when you see them in a movie or wherever, 
and, and you know they're, they're kind of a gray area I think for a lot of us and okay now what kind of conversion is that and it seems like everything is a Richard or rich and Richard Mason or a Richard Williams and and other names and Thrull and what's the difference and most people aren't really nerdy enough maybe to uh, to get all that straight in their head including me but uh, there were a lot of different variations of it is kind of the bottom line but this was a good one this type 2 uh, Richard's conversion was really good and not much different from the Richard's Mason the next one and I guess the last one so interesting era of history no doubt about it right at, during the early days of handgun cartridges at least from Colt <laughs> let's shoot a tin can oh yeah another one Boom. so uh, yeah this is the t I'll shoot another round maybe I won't keep you too long I know it's December as we do this, and you're probably cold watching. Uh, I know this is a little, it's not awkward, awkward, but you can't just grab it like on a Colt or like on a 73 single action. You kind of got to pull up pretty far and just knock them out. Same thing, sure beats uh, percussion <laughs> by a mile. Especially in this gun, I've always liked the 1860 Colt. Beautiful gun. I've had some issues with the ones I've owned. Uh, I really do. I have a love-hate relationship with percussion revolvers, and this makes it much more usable. Still a beautiful uh, firearm, to tell you the truth. I think they uh, they left this gap here. Uh, the housing doesn't cover the whole rod, so you can, I guess, work on the wedge. This is a little simpler, too. That's the other thing on these babies. Getting the wedge out sometimes is a pain, and you get it back in too tight. The cylinder won't turn, and yeah, until actually they get loosened up and used a little bit more. So on this one, this is kind of nice. It's just a little tab there that holds it in and you just turn that let's see, around. The flat part is down on that screw and that allows the wedge to come out. Yeah, I think pretty easily. At least it had been. <laughs> Maybe I have it turned wrong, but uh, I've had it out a couple of times that I didn't take the barrel off. Maybe it's got to be all the way around or something there. Yeah, you know, that's what I get for telling you how easy it was, isn't it? I believe that released it, though. Or maybe it's backwards. Maybe I'm backwards. But, uh, maybe it's all the way around like that. Yeah. I don't know what the heck. Uh, I know it was turned like that when I started, and I think all I did was turn it to there, and then it just came right out a couple of different times. I don't have it got a half cock that doesn't maybe it's because I've been firing it and it's warmed up or what the deal is there now we're definitely empty I don't want to flag John and me 50 times but I'm gonna get my handle on it oh well let me uh pop it. I'm used to having to hammer the things out all the time and I was so pleased to discover but this was so much simpler. So much simpler. We turned around it again. I don't think that was it. Oh well. Just have to believe me. Take my word for it. Okay. It it generally comes out really easily, and it has a couple of times. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it loosened up on me or something. But uh, so anyway, I have struggled with that with the the percussion. Uh, like I'm struggling right here, but that's the first time I've had to struggle with it and it seems the right tightness and There's no problem with it, but, but believe me it, it, it should come out easily. It has uh, Then also You have a little screw here not that you're maybe gonna use it a lot. This little bitty screw operates a tab and This safety Should you need it so it comes down and that blocks the hammer from uh, you know going all the way forward so if you you know want to leave it like that sometime I would not suggest you carry it like that on safe okay if you're expecting to be in a Dodge City gunfight at any moment <laughs> so let's shoot it again and uh, what have I neglected to tell you the 1860 Army percussion revolver is considered to be one of the coolest uh, revolvers of all time by most people okay there are just certain firearms that are like that if you if you interviewed uh, like 10 different 
experienced gun writers from the magazines. Uh, I hesitate to say YouTubers because everybody's not into the old guns, but just people that really know these old guns. They say, what's, what's the sexiest or the coolest old uh, revolver, the best looking, best feeling, and all that? A lot of them would probably say this 1860 Army. So that means even with the conversion, you still end up with a pretty cool firearm. And, and I agree, I just have always liked the 1860 Army. Uh, really, really nice. It's got a more of a three cock instead of a four click, you know, like with a Colt. One, two, three, yeah. So you're at the kind of the first click is where it releases the cylinder for reloading and everything. So same old deal, you know, five rounds because there's no hammer block or anything like that. So that I wanted to point out, and uh, I don't know, anything else you wanted to know about it? Like I say, can you see, now this one looks like it's almost welded to it, maybe it, it is, but this is what they, they, they did. They put that, that piece there that you see uh, in there, and because that's not on either of these, these firearms, this percussion or the Colt single action. And uh, on the first one, I think it actually kind of encased that a little bit, and uh, if a case blew or something, it would protect that, but uh, went a little further forward. But on, I, I guess the uh, Richards Type II, this one was like this. Uh, this pretty authentic, uh, sure. So anyway, nice nice old gun. Uh, let's put some bullets in it, 45 Colt, and shoot them. Of course, the gun, the bullets they were firing in this were, you know, actually that's the other thing. Uh, the early uh, cartridges, 41 Colt, for these first conversions were rim fire, by the way. They were rim fire. We're firing center fire, of course. Houston. <laughs> okay. Stalk of corn. All right. I know. I know what I've not done. You all back there still? Well, let's at least throw one at the gong. All right, conversion. See if you can wake up the gong. <laughs> all right. All right. My life is complete. Let's try that ram. All right. I like it. I like it. Let's try a red play here close. Wrap up with something I know I'm going to hit. Like that little red plate right there. I think I have one more for that green two liter. <laughs> yeah. So as you can see, it's a good shooter. You have to allow for a printing a little bit high. That's the case with most Colts. Yeah, it is, Colt single action armies and a lot of single actions in general, they print a little high. Uh, I think it's on purpose, you know. Uh, the old joke is you hold on the belt buckle or something, you know, if you're in a gunfight. So did I bring that back to, yeah. I'm used to the second click, you know, two cocked, two, uh, two clicks. And I'm also used to just grabbing that, like, like on this Colt. You just grab it, and it, you know, all you do is touch it. You don't have to move it. And, uh, but on the conversion, you kind of had to do that. I mean, think about it. Uh, this was their first, first go at an ejection rod, you know. <laughs> Give them a hard time about that, right? So there we go. Again, these, they were not chambered in 45 Colt, right? Uh, 45 Colt also had a little bitty rim on it. it uh, when it came out, it wasn't even out when these were converted, you know, 70 one you know until 73 of course so they were 44 most of these were 44 uh colt like i said okay so conversion this is a type 2 the richards conversion the transitional gun and some of you know a lot more about the conversions than i do pretty obvious if you listen to me uh yammer about them right but i've studied I joke about knowing just enough to be dangerous well in conversions yeah, that's really true i i know just not to be dangerous uh i don't think i misspoke too often but I, uh, that's kind of the, the gist of it. And again, on that, that third conversion series of Richards Mason, I think they still had that same ejector uh, rod uh, set, uh, set up. Yeah, I don't think they went to attach into the barrel yet. They might have, if you know, uh, correct me. Uh, that was on, I think, the open top model. It came out, uh, what, 72, one or two. It was a little bit different. It really wasn't a conversion at all. They didn't even call it. It was just called the open top. And uh, it was attached to the barrel. I know that I don't think uh, this one was in the, the third series of the Richards and Richard Mason, Richards Mason conversions. So pretty neat uh, time in history, pretty neat period of history. 
and these old revolvers, of course, ruled, and uh, they still rule around my house. I love them. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastall.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.